Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for additional board review lectures. And today's topic is going to be skin disorders. Let's talk about bullous pemphigoid, which is an autoimmune disorder with IgG antibody against hemidesmosomes. And the antibodies are below the epidermis. It shows linear immunofluorescence and also eosinophils with blisters similar to but less severe than pemphigus vulgaris and it affects the skin but spares the oral mucosa and here there's going to be a negative Nikolsky sign so those are some of the key points for the board exam in terms of detecting pemphigus now another high yield topic in dermatology is atopic dermatitis atopic dermatitis is a relapsing inflammatory skin disorder that's common in infancy and presents in different age groups. It's characterized by pruritus. That leads to lichenification. So pruritus leading to lichenification, you're going to think of atopic dermatitis. And the triggers are non-genetic and include climate, food, contact with allergens, and physical or chemical irritants. Keep in mind that in infants, it can present as erythematous weeping pruritic patches on the face, scalp, and uh, diaper area. And with children, you'll have dry, scaly, pruritic, excoriated patches in the flexural areas and neck. The diagnosis is made clinically. Patients will have mild eosinophilia and an elevated IgG. And you want to rule out seborrheic dermatitis, contact dermatitis, pityriasis rosacea, and cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. The treatment will be prophylactic measures, mainly using non-drying soaps or the use of moisturizer and avoidance of triggers is key. You want to treat with topical corticosteroids, avoid systemic steroids in light of their side effects, and patients can also try PUVA as well as topical immunodilators like tacrolimus. But really the first line is prophylactic measures that include non-drying soaps and the use of moisturizers and avoidance of the triggers. So another similar condition patients present with is contact dermatitis, type 4 hypersensitivity reaction and its pathogenesis involves allergic molecules that are passed through the epidermis taken up by Langerhorn cells. And keep in mind here that patients can be affected through allergens such as poison ivy, poison oak, nickel soaps, detergents, cosmetics, and rubber gloves. Also, one of the key factors for the diagnosis is a patch test. So mainly diagnosing contact dermatitis is clinical, but a patch test can be used to establish the causative allergen after the acute phase of the rash has been treated. And the differential includes atopic dermatitis, seborrheic dermatitis, impetigo, HSV and herpes zoster. It presents in various forms, the acute form from 24 to 48 hours after an allergic contact um, becomes suddenly erythematous and tiny blisters are seen. The subacute form usually presents with lesions that are less angry appearing than those of the acute inflammatory rash. And a chronic form can develop with erythema and lichenification. And the key part to remember with contact dermatitis is that um, T lymphocytes are involved. And if patients who come in need treatment for contact dermatitis, the first line is going to be prophylaxis and avoidance of the allergens and treating the patients with topical or systemic corticosteroids as needed with cool, wet compress to relieve and debride the skin has also been shown to be useful. In addition, let's talk about dermatitis herpetiformis. Here patients have pruritic papules and vesicles. The deposits of IgA are seen at the tips of the dermal papillae and it's associated with celiac disease. The board really likes to talk about celiac disease and its association with dermatitis herpetiformis. Another commonly asked board review topic is erythema multiform and its association with infections such as mycoplasma, HSV pneumonia, and drugs such as sulfa drugs, beta-lactams, and phenytoin. It presents with multiple types of lesions such as macules and papules and vesicles and target lesions. 
uh, that are seen as red papules with a pale central area. So really making the diagnosis for erythema multiform involves looking at the infection such as mycoplasma or HSV and then looking at any drugs that the patient may be on. And after that you want to look for the characteristic macules, papules, vesicles and target lesions. Stevens-Johnson syndrome is characterized by fever, bulla, and necrosis and sloughing of the skin. It usually is associated with an adverse drug reaction and it has a more severe form that is called toxic epidermal necrolysis. Those were some of the key high yield review topics for the COMLEX and USMLE board exam in dermatology. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for additional podcasts and lectures as well as video lectures to review for medical school and the board exams. Good luck in your preparation.